Welcome to Daily News Analysis brought to you by Shankaray's Academy Civil Speedia team. Today's date is 5th September 2024. So, the topic of discussion for today is the first article that we are going to discuss is the latest ILO study links AI to dip in labor income. So, this article is taken from the newspaper The Hindu page 1. So, regarding this topic, we are going to discuss about the basics of the ILO, which is nothing but the International Labor Organization. We are also going to discuss about the artificial intelligence basics and the impact of this AI on the labor market in India. We will also discuss why there is a need for the constant upskilling and reskilling because of the AI in today's era. Added to that, we will also discuss about the government initiatives taken for the constant upskilling and reskilling in India. The second topic of discussion is the Center Tripura signs peace pact with the two insurgent groups. So, this news article is taken from the newspaper, the Indian Express, page 8. With respect to this article, we will discuss about the insurgency groups and what is insurgency, its basics. We will also learn about the what are the constitutional provision with respect to the northeastern states. Along with it, we will also cover about the measures taken to control this insurgency groups in India. And lastly, we will discuss about the UN weather, WMO warns of red alert after record heat. So, this news article is taken from the newspaper Live Mint, page 9. So, in this article, we will explain about the WMO, which is the World Meteorological Organization, what is its composition and function. So, without further delay, let us get into today's discussion. So, this is the first news article that we are going to discuss today. Latest ILO study links AI to dip in the labor income. So, the recent study published by the ILO, which is nothing but the International Labor Organization, says that there is a stagnant labor income in the various part of the world. So, they studied the impact of technology over two decades in the 36 countries and they found there is an increase in the labor productivity and outcome, but there is a stagnant labor income. So, labor income is nothing but the earning that we get from doing a work. So, with this base, let us try to understand the basics of ILO, AI and the impact of AI on the labor market. So, AI is nothing but the artificial intelligence. It will mimic the human intelligence. They are machines which will mimic the human intelligence. So, the key AI technology are machine learning, deep learning, NLP and the robotics. So, machine learning is a subset of AI which will learn over time. As we feed the data, they will learn the information progressively. Next is the deep learning. Deep learning is nothing but the, it is also a subset of machine learning. They consist of artificial neural network similar to the neural network which is present in the human brain. So, this technology is used in case of image recognition as well as in the speech recognition. The next AI technology is the NLP which is the natural language processing. So, algorithm is feed into the machines so that they will analyze and identify the natural language that is existing. And next is the robotics which is seen in various cases such as the machines used in the heavy industries and the prosthetic legs which have been in usage. So, this artificial intelligence is used in case of problem solving, decision making, reasoning and learning. So, now talking about the ILO, International Labour Organization, it is a specialized agency under the UN. So, analyzing the PYQ, they have asked a question about the ILO, first regarding the establishment. It was established in the year 1919. They have also asked the question about the what is the role of ILO. The main role of the ILO is to promote the rights of the workers and also to fight against the child labor. The main aim of the ILO also includes ensuring the fair wages to the workers and a decent work environment. Along with it, they also wanted to ensure the freedom of forming an association for the workers. And in addition, they also aim to provide equal opportunity for all the workers. So, now we will see what is the impact of this AI on the employment and the labor market. See, uh, AI is a double-edged sword. It can create jobs, also create displacement of jobs. Let us say an example of a heavy industry. Machines are used. So, now a work which can be done by 10 person can be done by one machine. Here, there is a displacement of work, but there is an increase in productivity and the output. The output is given in a faster way. It also creates job opportunity to one 
who have a skill in AI development and so on. So, it is going to widen the economic gap between the person who can work well with the AI and do, does not have knowledge in the AI. So, this is what addressed here. The automation lead to job displacement in routine task. That is what I explained. A machine which can produce mass number is leading to a job displacement for an employee who is going to produce it. It is also widening the gap between the low skill and high skill workers. So, who have high skill workers can work with the AI and get a job, but who are not well with the AI find it difficult to apply the AI in the work and continue their job. So, this can intensify the economic inequality and the economic gap between the one who have knowledge in the AI and one who do not. Next is the wage pressure. So, the AI is increasing the production, productivity and the output. So, it will give the benefit to the owners more than the workers because the productivity is increasing but the income to this workers is very stagnant. So, this is widening the gap between the owners and the workers. Added to this, we can also see in the COVID period, the work of the people was displaced by the AI driven automation. So, this led to the job losses and the wage decline. This has in turn led to the 40% drop in the labor income share from the year 2020-2022. So, there is a constant requirement to upskill and reskill to assess the job opportunity available in the market. So, government is taking various initiatives to upskill and reskill. So, one such initiative is the Pradhan Mantri Kaushal Vikas Yojana. So, this is a skill development program which is given by the Ministry of Skill Development and the Entrepreneurship. So, they will provide this short term skill training to the unemployed college and school dropouts in various areas like the AI and data analytics which enables them to get a job opportunity in the market. Next is the national skill development mission. It aims to train over 300 million people in various sectors, most importantly in the areas of digital and IT skills because there is a large digital divide in case of India. Next is the skill India mission. So, this mission focuses on the upskilling workers in areas of advanced technology like the AI and the robotics we already discussed. Next is the Future Skill Prime Initiative. It is a joint initiative by the Ministry of Electronics and Information Technology along with the NASCOM. It is a non-profit organization named as the National Association for the Software and the Service Company. So, this Future Skill Prime Initiative provides reskilling and upskilling for the Indian workers in the field of IT and ITS. And lastly, we will discuss about the Atma Nirbhar Skilled Employee and Employer Mapping Scheme. So, this is a portal, digital platform which will connect the workers with the job opportunity available in the market. It also enhances the skills by providing the skill enhancement programs. So, in this article, we saw what are the basics of the ILO, AI and the impact of AI on the job opportunity and the market. We also saw what are the upskilling and reskilling missions taken by the government to promote them. So, now we will see a prelims practice question with respect to this news article. So, this question was asked in the year 2018. International Labour Organization Conventions 138 and 182 are related to which of the following? Child labour, adaptation of agricultural practices to global climate change, regulation of food prices and food security, gender parity at the workplace. The correct answer is child labor. That is all with respect to this news article and now let us move on to the next one. So, this is the next news article that we are going to discuss today. The center and Tripura government has signed a peace pact with the two insurgent groups. So, let, un let us understand why it is in the news first. So, our central government as well as the Tripura government have signed a peace pact with the two insurgent groups. So, the two insurgent groups with whom they have signed is the National Liberation Front of Tripura and the All India Tripura Tiger Force. So, this peace pact aims to end the violence and bring this uh, insurgent groups into the mainstream to carry out the development in this region. Actually, the main reason for the insurgency is the underdevelopment. If we carry out the development, 
the insurgency can be reduced successfully. So, in this context, let us try to understand what is insurgency, some major insurgent groups in India. We will also see what are the measures taken by the government to address this issue. Firstly, let us see some constitutional provision which are established specific to the northeastern states. First is the sixth schedule. We know there are almost 12 schedules in the Indian constitution. The sixth schedule deals with the establishment of the autonomous district council. So, these councils are having the function of legislation with respect to the land and forest in these areas. They also have some judicial powers with respect to the tribal customary laws. They also have the power of revenue collection. Note that the governor is responsible for increasing or decreasing the area under the autonomous district council. It is not the president it is the governor. Talking about the membership of this autonomous district council, it consists of almost 30 members. 26 members are elected while the 4 members are the nominated by the governor. So, these ADCs are a self-governing institution in case of the tribal areas. According to the article 244 and 275, these council are established in the state of Assam, Tripura, Meghalaya and Mizoram. Note that Manipur is not in the 6th schedule. Next is with respect to the article 371. Article 371 deals with the special provision to certain states. First is the 371A which is dealing with the special provision in case of Nagaland. So, this article will protect the customary laws in the state of Nagaland and they will ensure these parliamentary laws are applicable to Nagaland only after it is approved by the state legislative assembly. Similarly, we have Articles 371D for Assam, 371C for Manipur and 371F for the Sikkim. So, these article provides for the establishment of special committees to protect the interests of the tribal communities existing in this region. Next is the interline permit. So, this is a permit which will be given to the outsiders to enter certain states such as the Nagaland, Arunachal and Mizoram. So, they have to own a permit to enter this region. So, in this case, it will help to protect the indigenous population residing in this area. So, these are some important constitutional provisions which are specific to the northeast region. Kindly make note of it. So, we have mentioned about the term insurgency in the news article. Now, let us understand about it. So, insurgency is nothing but the organized violent groups who aim to overthrow the government which is in place. They wanted to destabilize the government. So, this insurgent groups are prevalent in various part of the country, especially in the northeast Jammu and Kashmir and the regions which are affected by the left wing extremism which is usually the central and the eastern India. So, now we will see what are the insurgent groups in India. Talking about the insurgent groups in case of Northeast India, first is the NSCN which is the National Socialist Council of Nagaland. So, the main demand of this insurgent group is to have a sovereign Naga state called as the Naga Lim. Next is the Ulfa which is the United Liberation Front of Assam. First, they wanted to have an independent Assam but later their focus shifted to the preservation of the identity of the Assamese people in the state of Assam. Third insurgent group in the northeast India is the MNF which is the Mizo National Front. Initially, they wanted to have an independent Mizo but now they are existing as a political party in the state of Mizoram. Next, we will see what are the insurgent groups in case of Jammu and Kashmir. So, there is an insurgent group called as the Hizbul Mujahideen and a Lashkar e Taiba. So, they are having a separatist notion. They wanted to succeed the Jammu and Kashmir from India and join it with the Pakistan. It is said that they also have a terrorist support from the Pakistan side. So, next is the left wing extremism. So, these are nothing but the Naxalit Moist insurgency. They wanted to overthrow the government and establish a communist state. So, this left wing extremism is prevalent in case of central and the eastern India. So, now we will see what are the measures taken to the address this insurgency problem in India. So, first is the military operation. So, operations such as all clear. 
So, this is a military operation which is jointly conducted by the India and Bhutan in the year 2002. So, they wanted to re root out the insurgency group in this region. Next is the Operation Rhino. They wanted to address the insurgency group known as Ulfa in the state of Assam which we have already discussed. Next is the Operation Hifaz Z. So, this military operation was conducted to remove the insurgency group which were prevalent in the state of Manipur. So, these are three important military operations which were conducted to address the insurgency problem in the state of Assam and Manipur. Next is the negotiation and the peace talk. So, analyzing the PYQ, there was a question regarding the Naga Peace Accord 2015. So, this peace accord was signed to address the problem of the insurgency in Naga land. So, similarly, peace accords such as Mizo Accord, Bodo Accord were signed to address the issues. So, based on the Bodo Accord, autonomy was given to the Bodo region in the northeast region. So, there are other initiatives which were taken to develop the regions in this insurgency affected areas. We already saw underdevelopment was the main reason for the insurgency in this region. So, to undertake the development, councils such as the Northeastern Council were established to address the issues. Special laws were also formulated to address the issue of insurgency. One such law is the AFSPA known as the Armed Forces Special Powers Act. So, this act will give special powers to maintain the law and order in the disturbed areas which is nothing but the insurgent affected areas. Next is the Unlawful Activities Prevention Act. So, under this act, various groups which are creating an insurgency are declared unlawful and severe actions were taken against them. So, these are some main government responses with respect to the insurgency. First is the military operations, next is the peace talks. Along with it, we also saw about the development initiative and the special laws undertaken to address the issue. So, with this, we will see a prelims practice question. Which of the constitutional provision provides for the establishment of the autonomous district council in the tribal areas of the northeastern state? The answer is the sixth schedule. So, it allows for the establishment of ADC in the state of Assam, Tripura, Mizoram and Meghalaya. With this, we will conclude the discussion on this article and now let us move on to the next one. So, this is the news we are going to see now. UN Weather Agency WMO warns of red alert after the record heat. So, this news article is given in the newspaper Live Mint. So, let us understand why it is in the news first. Rising temperature is observed in the various parts of the world, especially in countries like Japan, Australia, Norway and China. So, various actions are taken to address the climate change in today's world. But this rising temperature says that these measures are insufficient. So, on this backdrop, let us try to understand about the World Meteorological Organization, its organization and the composition. We will also discuss what are the functions of this WMO from the prelims perspective. WMO, the World Meteorological Organization is a United Nations Weather and Climate Agency. So, let us understand what is meteorology first. Meteorology is nothing but the study of atmosphere and climate added to that weather. So, we know United Nations is an organization which is formed in the year 1945 after the World War II. The main aim of this United Nations is to promote peace, security and cooperation. So, the World Meteorological Organization is also a agency of this United Nations. So, they will provide information about the atmosphere, climate, weather and the water resources in the earth. The successor of this World Meteorological Organization is the International Meteorological Organization which was established in the year 1973. The headquarters for this WMO is situated at the Geneva, Switzerland. Now, we will see what are the organization and composition of this WMO. Actually, it consists of five organs. First is the World Meteorological Congress, then the Executive Council, Regional Association, Technical Commission and the Sec Secretariat. First, World Meteorological Congress. So, they are responsible for the decision making. They are the highest decision making body in the WMO. Talking about the Executive Council, they will implement the decisions which are taken by this Congress. They will meet annually, that is one year once. The decision making is taken based on the two-third of the majority of the votes. So, this is the membership of this Executive Council. It consists of three vice presidents, six regional association president and 27 directors of the National Meteorological or 
hydro meteorological services so you can just give a read of the members of this executive council next is the regional association they are responsible for coordinating the activities which are taken by this congress and the executive council so the president of this regional association are the members of this executive council next is the technical commission this technical commission consists of the expert committees in the field of meteorology and the hydrology they will give recommendation to the congress and the executive council and lastly is the secretariat this secretariat is, is head by the secretary general so he is responsible for taking the decisions with respect to the administration and the technical work in the congress and the executive council the tenure of this secretary general is from 4 years to the maximum of 8 years so this is the overall organization and composition of the world meteorological organization so now we will see what are the functions of this world meteorological organization first is the data exchange so this wmo will regulate and facilitate the exchange of data and information from one to another for example the early warning initiative is taken by them they will ensure that universal protection from the hazardous event by the 2027 this is one of the main aim of this wmo they are also responsible for the formulation of policy both at the national and the regional level so these are the two main function one is the exchange of data and next is the formulation of policy next important function is the climate and the environment so they play a leading role in the international efforts to monitor and protect them one such example is the implementation of unf triple c which is nothing but the united nation framework convention on the climate change so this is an international convention which was signed in the year 1992 at the earth summit so this earth summit held at the rio so the main function of this unf triple c was to reduce the emission of greenhouse gases one of the main initiative taken under the unf triple c is the paris agreement 2015 which aims to reduce the global warming to less than 2 degree celsius so they will also collaborate with the other un agency and the national meteorological and hydrological services to bring a change they also provide advice and assessment to government on the matters which are required to address the climate change and other aspects so that's all with respect to the function organization and composition of the world meteorological organization we will also see a prelims practice question with respect to the topic we discussed earlier the question is consider the following statements regarding the world meteorological organization wmo is a successor to the international meteorological organization the secretariat of wmo is the highest decision making body third statement is the global climate litigation report 2023 is released by the wmo here the first statement is correct but the second statement is incorrect because the secretary is not responsible for making the decision in the meteorology but the congress department of the wmo is responsible for making the decision so this option is incorrect so the third option is also incorrect because this report is published by the unep which is nothing but united nations environmental program so the answer is one only so that's it with respect to this article we have come to end of today's video if you found the video informative do hit like give your feedbacks as comment and don't forget to subscribe thank you have a nice day